deaf, you know. Uh, I'd like to use your phone. Oh, no. You live here, you use the pay phone. Well, where's that? Down the end of the alley, uh, at the other entrance. to dinner and then you have to make it. <laughs> Delicious. Remind me to ask you again sometime. Thank you. Cognac and your coffee? Mm hmm. You don't think I don't appreciate the 12-hour day you put in. Oh, it was worth it. Just imagine clean desk drawers, clean files. We are now eligible for the good housekeeping seal of approval. <laughs> it's just the trouble. How am I ever going to find anything in all that neatness? Well, don't brood. It'll never last. Ah, oh, this is what I call living. As the old saying goes, music has charms to soothe the savage. Oh, fine. Well, if that's the savage, I'll invite him in. Hi, Nat. Come on in. Hi, Lucy. Sorry to bother you, but... What's the matter? Not school tonight? No, I had to work an extra shift. Oh? There's his corpse de lecti. A man. About 45. He's gunned in an alley. No witnesses. Wallet's been taken, so there's no ID. And Will Gentry needs Michael Shane? Well, he didn't exactly put it that way, Lucy. He said, pick up Mike Shane. He's always crawling around where he shouldn't be. Wonder if he can crawl out of this guy's pocket. Mr. Uh, corpus de lecti's. Uh-huh. It seems that he had this matchbook. Doesn't everybody? Not with your name on it. Uh-oh. That's all I need. A late date with Gentry. Well, I'll keep the percolator burning in the window if you two want to come back. Mm, sorry, Angel. I'm afraid it'll be too late. I better drop you off. Just think that lovely pot going to waste. I'll give you a rain check on it. No, thanks. Next time you can take me out. <laughs> No. Nope. 
Manager, come here, will you? This man register here? That's right. What name? Smith. He give me a ten dollar bill. Your room's worth that much? No, the room's only worth six dollars. But for four extra bucks, even you can call yourself Smith. All right, that's all. Okay, boys. Mike. M. Shane, check. Telephone number, check. 9 a.m. to... 9 a.m. Tuesday. Nobody ever sees me that early in the morning. You think Lucy could have forgotten it if he called your office? Not a chance. She'd never let a potential client off the hook. Well, thanks for nothing. So let me have it. So it won't be a total loss. I do know one thing. What? Who writes on matchbooks? Who? Somebody in a big hurry or else on the run. Too bad he couldn't have run a little faster. 32 slug caught up with him. Anything else? No, that's all for now. Ah, uh, stay in touch. Don't I always? in the morning. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Shane never sees anyone before 10. Call later, won't you? Bye. Lucy! Michael? Yes. Are you awake now? Look, like I said, was I supposed to see someone at 9 tomorrow morning? You know I never make appointments for you at that hour. And besides, who is this early bird type? Just, just think now. Was there a letter, a note, anything with an unfamiliar name on it? Absolutely not. You know I never let a possible client get away. Well, this one sure did. Okay, go back to sleep. like this, but I wanted to see you before Mr. Carson did. Carson? You don't know him, but you will. You have an appointment with him tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Would you like a drink? Well, uh, maybe some wine. It's, uh, it might help me to unscramble my thoughts. Maybe you can unscramble mine. Like, uh, why did you have to see me tonight? Mr. Shane, Mr. Shane, my husband's name is Dave Barstow. I married him six years ago, and for me, it was for keeps. For him? The same. At least I thought it was, up to a year ago, until Bill Carson came into our lives. She had a relation to my uh, 9 a.m. appointment? William Carson is her husband, and Dave and I work for them. Here in Miami? Well, on the outskirts, about 20 miles. Have you ever heard of the Palmetto Health Farm? Yes, I have. You uh, have to be wealthy to get healthy there. I admit it helps. What do you and your husband do there? I'm Mr. Carson's secretary, and Dave... Well, Dave takes care of the physical side, you know. Slim, trim the bodies. And Mrs. Carson? Mrs. Carson is a comedian. She's the uh, gracious hostess to all the paying guests, dominant wife, 
an abusive boss to all the help. That is, except my husband. Let's uh, go out and come in again. Why are you here? I typed the letter Mr. Carson dictated, the one to you, setting up tomorrow's appointment. I never got the letter, Mrs. Barstow. You didn't? Well, I don't understand that. Any idea what he wanted to see me about? Yes. Only Mr. Carson wasn't aware that I knew. You see, he's going to hire you to get evidence on Dave and Bell so that he can divorce her. Don't listen to him, Mr. Shane, please. Don't listen to him. Mrs. Barstow, I don't get it. You want to protect the woman you say is running off with your husband? Don't you see? If he divorces her, then she's going to be free. Free to really take Dave away from me. Well, if I can just keep this quiet, I think I can work it out myself. I'll pay you anything you want, Mr. Shane, only just don't help William Carson. Tell me something. Is Carson about 45, gray at the temples? Why did you let me go on like this if you've already seen him? Let's just say I might have seen him, but not to talk to. Now, you go on home and relax. I don't believe there's any way that I can be of help to Mr. Carson. Thank you, Mr. Shane. I'm very grateful. Now, whatever the charge is... There won't be any. I'll write it off to my respect for the state of matrimony. Oh, one thing. I'd rather no one knew I'd seen you. It's just that it's kind of embarrassing. I understand. Improving my mind. Mr. Carson's private stock? As a matter of fact, yes. William has very good taste in scotch. Too bad it doesn't include women. All right, Elaine, let's review the bidding for the last time. You and I never had it so good. Speak for yourself. Sweetie, whether you know it or not, your jealousy's showing. Well, I prefer to call it something else. Like pride. Look, Elaine, you've dreamed up this whole thing about Belle and me. She's an employer, nothing more. And it's your job to drink with her and make love to her. All right, that does it. Now, you've blown this whole thing out of proportion. Now, you're not going to blow up this gravy train, and I'm going to see to that. Dave, wait, please. I'm sorry. I'm just no good at competition. And Belle scares me. She's just so sure of herself. You are scared, aren't you, sweetie? Yes, I am. Well, I love you more than anything else in the world, Dave. And I just get sick of the thought of maybe losing you. That's why I wanted to have it out tonight. But you got cold feet. I always do. Well, maybe you found a cure. Wearing your stockings to bed. All 
All right, let's cut out the tears and explain. Well, I didn't think you were having a business appointment tonight, so I followed you. That is, I started to follow you. I thought you were going to see Belle. And then I... I became ashamed of myself, and I just gave up. I just drove around. I parked. I looked at the ocean. I tried to figure out what happened to us and what I could do to make it the way it used to be. The time just slipped by. Look, I, I came in just two minutes before you did. Oh, Dave, I just didn't want you to know. It's all right, baby. It's all right. I know you have to cater to Belle, and I'll try to understand. Forgive me, David. Huh? Forgive me, please. to meet Michael Shane. This is my husband, Dave Barstow. Mr. Barstow? Shane? Oh, I hope you're checking in. Women outnumber the men four to one. It's always the way, isn't it? I wonder if you'd mind answering a couple of questions. 
But if it's about Mr. Carson, I've already told the police what I know, which is nothing. Where were you last night? About 11. I don't have to answer that question, Mr. Shane. I know why you lied to the police, Dave, but you can tell Mr. Shane the truth. I don't know what she's talking about. He's trying to save me the humiliation. He spent most of the evening with Bill Carson. That true, Mr. Barstow? You didn't have to say that, Elaine. Oh, well, let's just say that Mrs. Carson is a very demanding boss in certain instances. This demanding boss, where would I find her? In room number 14. Thanks. to come here. But you knew that I would, didn't you? I thought that was why you left the back door open. How do I look? When did you go to hair? Certainly not while I was in prison. That's for sure. Hmm. Poor Belle. But you make a very pretty widow, you know? I don't think you'll miss him, really. You'll get your money, and nobody will miss you. Good old Belle. You always were the one to lead a man around by the nose. But not anymore. And not me. Now, I'll give you exactly one day to dig up that cash. Otherwise, you know what'll happen. I told you I'd have it, and I will. You told me that once before, and you didn't. <laughs> That's just to make sure that I get the money tomorrow. Who is it? Michael Shane. I'd like to talk to you, Mrs. Carson. Come in, Mr. Shane. Sorry to bother you at a time like this. I've heard about you from my late husband. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Did I uh, interrupt anything? No, I was just packing some of my husband's things. Memories are hard to live with. Can I get you a drink, Mr. Shane? Or some black coffee would be fine. All right, I've got some in the pot. I'll heat it up.
He must have come in the back way. Well, he might be back. What do you mean? He forgot his hat. I told you that was Williams. Mrs. Carson, I saw your husband. A man doesn't wear $250 suits with a $4 hat. So he wasn't stylish. Did your husband go up to Miami often? No. Any idea what he'd be doing at a cheap motel? No, I don't. Unless he didn't want anyone to know where he was. We always stayed at the Park Arms. The owner is a friend. Was there another woman involved? No. And I resent the insinuation. William and I were very happy. I see. Where were you last night? Right here. With Dave. Nice and cozy. I'm sure that made your husband very happy. Unless you're both lying. I think it's about time you got out of here. All right. I'll respect your privacy. Oh, Mrs. Carson, just a thought for the day. Whoever was in that bedroom might have been after you. I'm in a book if you need me. Hi, kids. Any calls, Lucy? Will Gentry. Wanted to know how you figured in this case. Well, you should read the papers. Incidentally, thanks for the tip. The Tribune beat the town on the Carson yard. Yeah, how's Mrs. Carson taking it? Straight, with water on the side. And the lady's not for mourning, at least not convincingly. Another man? Men, Tim, men. So that's what took you so long, hmm? No, no, no. I struck out, Angel. You know, we can't get a picture of her. Nobody's been able to get in there with a photographer. Well, she must be a real dog. Not just the opposite. No pictures, no interviews. The press is playing it by ear. Did I say something? I don't know for sure. Why would a woman like that mix the fourth estate? Bad press, maybe? Or maybe she's got something to hide. Like what? Her face. There was a picture of her in her bedroom. She'd change the color of her hair. That's a woman's prerogative. Hey, Mike, if you want the picture, why don't I do a little uh, breaking and entering? No, no, that's out. And I can't get in. They'd watch me like a hawk. Oh, now, wait a minute, Charlie. Don't you think Lucy's getting a little uh, lumpy and stuff? Oh, I think she could use a little going over. I resent this. That's it. Uniform of the day, exercise suit and sweatshirt. Thanks a lot. Come on, I'll fill you. Yeah, here's what you want. Lucy. <laughs> so all I can say is, wow. Uh, that's what all the men are going to say after a week of this. Well, I didn't think I was exactly that far gone when I came here. Come on, let's try it again. Oh. Ready? One. Good girl. <laughs> Two. Very good. Once more now. No, no, that's not that. Come on, Lucy, oh. once more. Oh, that away. Good girl. Good girl. I think you've done about all you can for the camera. Don't yes. you agree? Go put somebody else on the rack. But come back. I'll miss you. Don't get any ideas, Miss Hamilton. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't. All right, everybody. Into the snack 
backfire for some kelp loaf. If you want him, you have to pay. And you have to pay plenty. So that's the pitch. Bargain day for husbands. There's only one thing standing in your way, Belle. And that's me. Couldn't be that you might have had something to do with William's uh, accident. That was no accident, Belle. You know that. I understand you were out last night. As far out as Miami. That's right. I went out there to hire Shane to protect your interests. My interests? Of course. You see, if Carson had hired him, he would have found out about you and Dave. And he could have divorced me without a penny. And I couldn't have paid you. Exactly. So, by protecting your interests, I protect my own. Appreciate your help. Suppose I tell you to pack up and get out of here. David, go with me. I don't think you like that, so. Lucy? Are you? Oh, yes, I, I'm afraid so, Mr. Barstow. Oh, uh, I told you to call me Dave, remember? Oh, yes. Well, uh, uh, Dave. Well, maybe I haven't been spending much time with you. Hmm? Oh, no, you've been wonderful. It's just that I, uh, well... Something's I, wrong. Yes, uh, I just called home and my father's very ill. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe you'll be back with us someday. Oh, yes, I certainly will. That's, that's a promise. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, listen, let me have that for the paper, will you? Sure, as soon as I'm through with it. Angel, my gratitude is boundless. Boundless enough to get me something to eat, I hope. All I've had today is kelp loaf. What's that? Seaweed and sesame. It has all the elements that are vital for good, sturdy health. Oh, I'm sick as a dog. When I'd have the drugstore send up some sandwiches. Elaine portraits make lasting memories. 24-hour service. Good, then they'll be open. Dick? Get on down there. Dig up everything you can. And then call me. All right. Okay, Angel. Now, tell me what happened. Well, they taught me two things. Carry your own lunch and um, stay away from Dave. Handy guy, huh? Yeah, he's handy, all right. With everyone except his wife. Mm-hmm. You interested? Yeah, go on. Dinner first, hmm? Dinner first. I'll call. Mike. Steak. Yeah. Here we go. 
Uh, do you mind if I use your phone? No, no. Go right ahead. Uh, Mike? Yeah, it's me. Yeah, that picture was made here, all right. But under the name of Belle Watson. What's the address on Miss Watson? No, not Miss Watson. Mrs. Ed Watson. I dated about two years ago. Uh, 170 Northeast 3rd Street. 170 Northeast 3rd Street. Okay, thanks, Dick. Good job. Come on, Tim. See you later, Lucy. down here from Atlanta. Ed Watson. He worked for the Barnett Lumber people up there. Barnett Lumber? You guys cops? Wouldn't surprise me none if this Watson were in trouble. He'd run out and left his wife high and dry. A good looker like that. Must have been out of his mind. Did Watson wear a toupee? A what? Hairpiece. Well, that's hard to tell. Seems like he had a pretty good head of hair to me. Thanks. I crack about a toupee. Well, the guy who slugged me was wearing one. The inside of his hat had spirit gum in it. That's that stuff they used to paste on hair pieces. Oh. The Barnett Lumber family. There was a kidnapping two years back. Big story out of Atlanta. How does that tie into this? Well, the go-between was a man named Ed Watson. He worked for Barnett. He was supposed to deliver the ransom to the kidnapper. Think you'd have anything on the case in the Tribune files? Probably. How about picking it up for him? Okay, I'll get the stuff tomorrow. Good. Look, I'm going to drop you off, and then I'm going to uh, do a little checking on a marriage license. You mean you and Lucy? Oh, now, don't spread that around, Luella. You may get an exclusive. <laughs> the, uh, uh, they wouldn't want strangers pouring over their marriage licenses, Mr. Shane. Well, how about you, Sam? You're not a stranger, are you? Uh, think it'd be legal if you took a look? Well, uh, yeah, almost legal. I uh, won't trouble, though. Oh, what's that? Well, I left home without my glasses. I can't read without my glasses. Well, what do you know about that? No, uh, I just happen to have 20, 20 vision. Well, you, you certainly have, Mr. Shane. You certainly have. about that guy who slugged me that was watson wasn't it your first husband i looked up the marriage license no divorces and no predisposition of widowhood that's crazy oh no that's bigamy and that's what carson wanted to see me about you and watson were shaking him down no no you've got it all wrong <laughs>
got your gun. What were you doing with it? Well, I heard a shot, so I grabbed it from your drawer and ran out. When I didn't see anything, I came back in and... Shane, he clobbered me. Tell me you were here. Bring the files on the Barnett kidnapping? Yeah, well, I could find on it. Oh, did Mike fit in? Yeah, sure. Everything except who killed William Carson. Now, you know I'd tell you if I knew, Will. Here's a picture of uh, Curly Buford. He was the kidnapper in the case. They picked him up minus the ransom. His face. You ought to know it. His picture's hanging in every post office in town. He escaped from prison a couple of days ago. Wait a minute. here in town? That's exactly what I mean. Gentry, put out on all points on Curly Buford. There's a chance he might be in this area. Right. What's his connection in this case? Tell you later. Jim, have you got a picture of Ed Watson? You mean Bell's first husband? Yeah. Ran in the Atlanta papers. This is a picture of William Carson. Well, the caption says he's Watson. Then Bell didn't commit bigamy, don't you see? No, I don't. Suppose you try enlightening me. It looked like she was married to Watson and Carson at the same time, but she actually wasn't. They were both the same man. And Buford killed him because he was double-crossed. If he did, that might make her next on his list. Office. Mr. Shane, please. I'm sorry, he isn't in just now. May I have him call you? Yes. Uh, I'm at the Park Arms. Tell him it's very urgent. Tell him Mrs. Carson said it's most urgent. Very well. She's at the Park Arms. She made it sound important. Thanks, Angel. Bell Carson is at the Park Arms. Let's go. shot him to keep him from talking. We know all about the kidnapping, Mrs. Carson. And we know your husband was killed with a 32. Buford's gun is a 38. But yours is a 32. You heard Dave say I was with him the night my husband was killed. And that's not the only 32 in the world. No, it isn't. I took this 32 from David Barstow. It's registered in his wife's name. Well, we'll run him through ballistics. 
Pick up the bar, sir. Anyone want to change their statement before we get the ballistics report? I didn't kill him, Mr. Shane. Why should I? I'll tell you why. Because with him out of the way, I'd be free to marry Dave. At your price. She's been playing the sweet little innocent, but I could tell you some things Shut about up, her. Shut up, You're making it worse. Well, it was cleaned after it was fired, all right. But it's the murder weapon. And it's yours, Mrs. Barstow. Oh, that's ridiculous. Elaine couldn't kill anyone. Honey, I'll get you the best lawyer in town. You're the one who needs the lawyer, Dave. When I got home last night, the gun was missing. And you had it. Why, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I was with Belle that night. Wasn't I, Belle? Belle? I'm tired of lying, Dave. He wasn't with me. I don't know where he was, but he wasn't with me. Book him. I was with you, Belle. That was her idea. No, it wasn't, Dave. Belle wouldn't want an investigation. And that's exactly what her husband's murder would lead to. I did it for you. I, I did it for you. you you've got to believe. I did it for you. He did it for your money. Well, I guess you won't be needing me any longer. Oh, yes, we will, Mrs. Carson. You're still wanted in Atlanta for your part in that kidnapping. And you've got some explaining to do about Buford's death. Hold it for questioning. What about me? You can go. Uh, but not until I say something. This whole thing started because of you. You withheld evidence about that gun. You put pressure on Bell and your husband. As a matter of fact, you did everything you could to complicate this case. I just want you to know. I'm aware of it. But you can't prove it, can you? If I could, you wouldn't be walking out that door. And goodbye, Mr. Gentry. Well, one thing about this business. You meet such nice people. Come on, I'll buy you both a cup of coffee. you in the first place? Mark Buford. And he figured he'd take it from there. A savory bunch of characters, huh? Well, oh, my poor back. I have got muscles that I never even knew existed before. Yeah, it'll work out more often. Oh. Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. And there they are, folks, our four beautiful finalists. Miss Mary Beth Wilder, Miss Sally Dean, Miss Ellen Cook, and Miss Gay Dennis. If you weren't Gay's press agent... Who is she, Bertie? It's Sally Dean. Wait a minute. Dennis? Hey, I hope you got an angle, Shane. That five grand's getting cold. Snap to it, Michael. You shut up. Point that cigar the other way, lover. It might go off. That why you borrowed $20 from me this morning? So you could go out and buy flowers for that, uh... uh, uh steady, Angel. Listen, Dick, when Gentry finds out you sent those posies, you're gonna have some explaining to do. Yeah, to him and to me. <laughs> Hello, 
This has been a four-star production.